Hello and welcome to the Pulse of Spokane. My name is Emmett Rice. Today I'm joined by Corey and Laura from the National Society of Leadership and Success. Thanks for joining me today, y'all. How are you doing today? Thanks for having doing us. Doing really well. We're doing really good. Glad to hear it. So we'll start with Laura. Can you tell me uh, about the history of the organization and a little bit about yourself? Yep, sure. Um, first of all, I'm the membership outreach chair for Eastern Washington University's chapter of the National Society of Leadership and Success, which we often refer to as the NSLS. Um, I did graduate uh, from Eastern uh, last winter with my degree in inter uh, interdisciplinary studies with minors in communication and disability studies. So I have been with the NSLS since fall of 2019, so about a year and a half now. And I'm currently a, an MBA student at Western Governors. So just to give you a little history about the NSLS, um, it was founded in 2001 by visionary Gary Torek. It is the nation's largest honor society with 724 chapters at university across the country and 1.4 million members nationwide. So it is fully accredited by Kanya, and it is a certified B Corp through the U.S. Department of Education. Um, so it is uh, a wonderful, wonderful organization. And um, I guess maybe I should tell you my personal testimony first, and then we'll turn it over to Corey and he can introduce himself. But uh, someone once posted to Facebook that confidence and worthiness are positively related. And it made me really stop and think, I'm like, are they? And they're not always. Um, I possess the confidence to charge head forth into the unknown, knowing that I will emerge from the other side stronger, wiser, and more experienced. But I'm not always certain that I'm worthy of the rewards that come with those successes. And that has changed since I've joined the NSLS. Um, I realize that I do have value, I do have a contribution to make, and I do matter. So my worthiness is now catching up to my confidence, and I attribute that completely to my active involvement in the organization. So that's a little bit about me, the, the NSLS, and I'll turn it over to Corey if he wants to introduce himself and maybe talk a little bit about what you can expect if you join the organization. Yeah, well, um, Corey Horseman. I've only been with the company for about eight months or organization, and um, I was one of the newest board members. So she's got a little bit more um, experience than I do, but it's just been so awesome being a part of this community, being on the board. Um, I'm branching out a lot right now. I'm working on a partnership with a business that I never thought that I would ever be doing anything like that. And you know, it's nervous scary at first but i already feel more confident and uh we get these speaker broadcasts that come in and get to talk to us and the amount of knowledge i've taken from these people is unbelievable it's uh truly just a once in a lifetime experience i believe so i'm trying to get the most out of it right now I'm trying to turn it into a job at the national office just because i love this organization so much with so little time i can just tell what they're all about and don't want to leave them for for a while yeah it seems like uh, in my research, there's been a lot of uh, pretty high caliber uh, speakers that have come in. Is there one that stood out to you or a um, story from one that really stood out? I think Matthew McConaughey had some really great, just like down to earth advice for everybody. Just yeah. like about nerves and what to do when you're feeling nervous, you know, um, kind of using some of his techniques right now, actually. But um, Bill Nye, Bill Gates, just great names that have all this knowledge that are willing to share it with these college students and beyond and uh just so appreciative of yeah. all of them i'm sure hearing uh matthew mcconaughey talk about anything is always interesting oh it was the character it was he, yeah. he was awesome probably my favorite so far sure and laura this might be a question for you um you mentioned it's the largest honor society um but what do you think makes this honor society stand out about or stand up stand out above others and why should people join this one well uh because we're just better <laughs> uh, one of the things that really does make us stand out is that it's not just a membership um with your 
uh, when you join, you are automatically enrolled into the Foundations of Leadership Certification Program, which I'll let Corey talk a little bit about here in a moment. But in addition to that, um, they, they, it's endless opportunities. Um, they have advanced certification, they have executive certification. The former, you practice leadership, and the latter, you live leadership. Um, they also have plenty of other opportunities. They do have a, na a national summit that um, is a two-day event, has amazing keynote speakers. We had Scott Harrison and Jim Quick this last year. Um, it's an opportunity to network with other members from around the country. And being virtual this year, it allowed us um, a lot more access. People that maybe weren't able to travel in the past were still able to participate. So just the energy and the knowledge and the practice, um, we get to choose our own uh, path through those days and sign up for whatever courses we want. And then we get to go in and, and practice specific leadership skills, either one-on-one -on -one or with small groups and breakout sessions. So that's really awesome. Personally, my favorite's the Learning Guild. Uh, it's uh, members and chapter leadership and advisors um, that meet with the national office to discuss topics ranging from guest speaker selection to member engagement. Um, we test pilot future program content and plan the annual summit. It provides uh, us with an opportunity to engage with some of the country's greatest leaders through interactive webinars, like I'm going to be attending a, a Stedman Graham webinar here at the end of the month on identity leadership, and that will include a conversation with the man himself. So those kinds of things. But really, it's just the collaborative community of individuals that are passionate and dedicated to building leaders who make a better world. So those are just a few of the extra offerings. We do also have a blog and we were just nationally recognized for contributing to that. We wrote an article on how we at our chapter successfully run virtual SNTs. And SNTs are part of the initial induction process. And that's what most members encounter when they first start. So Corey just finished that himself not too long ago. And I think that makes him the expert on this subject. So Corey, if you'd be so kind. Yeah, sure. <clears throat> the S&Ts are just um, success networking teams is what they're called. And you kind of just meet with a small group weekly over three or four times and you share your weekly goal with the people around you. And um, that kind of helps you to follow through. Um, I just used like um, school goals, you know, for a few weeks, but I was ahead of my classes after talking with these friends of mine and laying out my goal and how I will achieve it. and. Uh, it just, it really helped sharing your goals with someone else and then following through and telling them the success you've had or failure and then trying to right that wrong. But either way, you know, no judgment in these groups and they're just here to help you. Sure. And Laura, you mentioned uh, kind of like a silver lining of COVID that's happened in fact, or in the sense that you've gotten more membership, yeah. more participation. In a sense, have you been able to connect with members of the NSLS outside of the region that you're currently in and maybe reaching out in groups that are larger uh, just across the country and reaching out to more people in the society just in the fact that we have Zoom now and that's you know something that's more accessible and more popular have you been able to kind of expand your horizon of what the NSLS is you know Either we have an a, a lot of that involvement actually is um, there are chapter leader forums. So we participate with other chapter leaders from around the country and we discuss topics that are pertinent to our chapters. And um, for example, the last one was on SNTs. And, you know, we had different schools from around the country share their format because it depends on the number of people you have. It depends on so many things on what uniquely fits. We, do get framework from the national office. However, we do tailor that specifically to the needs of our members because that's what we really are about. We're about serving our members and in the hopes that they grow and then want to turn around and serve a younger generation. So it's that paying it forward, if you will. Um, but yeah, that those, those chapter leader forums are amazing. I mean, we've even had people from Puerto Rico on there. So um, it's, it's an opportunity to find out what other people are doing well, how we can kind of pill for that and not reinvent the wheel. And um, so that that's really connecting, uh, but also just our engagement with the national office. Um, we've been having able to meet with department heads 
to talk about the future of marketing or the future of educational programming. They are unbelievably access accessible to just the individual chapter members. And so um, it really has um, created a strange kind of intimacy that wasn't there pre-COVID. And certainly people with disabilities, um, you know, are able to participate in a way that may not have been available to them before. So it's, it's a lot more accessible um, really from the ground up. And those um, chapter leader meetups that she's talking about also, there's about 750 campuses you know, countrywide that do this. So there's a lot of knowledge and insight coming together. And Eastern before was already really good at um, <clears throat> online classes and the NSLS branch for Eastern Washington University was just amazing with that. I mean, I came in, you know, in the middle of all this and it seemed like they had prepped for this for 10 years, you know, it was just seamless, easy. Sure. And that was a big help. Yeah, I'm sure. And uh, for someone that might be wanting to join the NSLS, um, that might be wondering what what reasons you two joined. Could you elaborate on that a little bit, either of you? I'm sure I'll go first and you can finish up, Laura. Um, I joined because, you know, I got an invitation. I looked at it. Um, a big thing for me was I will be graduating soon looking for a job and they write um, recommendation letters. They have a job bank, you know, all that. I was like, oh, that could be good, you know, to help me find a job. And then when I got in the organization and started talking to people and then got a board position, I was just like, this organization's amazing, you know. I uh, I don't want to leave it. It's just too cool. Um, so I think <laughs> just that fact kind of kept me around, and just great people yeah. through and through. That's amazing. And Laura, uh, I, I I got an invitation as well, um, and I quite frankly joined because I thought it would look good on a resume. Um, but I'm also fairly open-minded about things anyway. I'm like, once I commit, I'm going to see if I can get the most out of it anyway. So, um, but yeah, just the incredible collaboration and the sense of community. And um, there's always the perks, the NSLS exclusive scholarships, the exclusive speaker content, um, broadcast content, um, all of that good stuff. The, the job board, um, you know, access to internships, all that stuff is a bonus, but it really is the, the community. And um, the fact that it is so, self-centered in the sense that when I joined, it was my goals and my growth that was the focus. It wasn't some uh, prescribed anything that was, I, I was being indoctrinated, if you will. Um, and, and I think that's also what really just makes it special is it's, it really does um, celebrate everyone's unique position and their unique desires and goals. And so, yeah, that's why I stayed. And I'm with Corey too. Someday I'd really like to work there. and. Um, yeah, it would be awesome. Yeah, I think a lot of those uh, resume builder activities that we do end up being more fruitful than, you know, just being a resume builder or something that looks good on paper. So I'm glad to hear about exactly. both of your experiences. Um, you mentioned that both of you got invitations. And before we wrap up, how would how would somebody go about joining the NSLS? Do you need an invitation or are the two of you extending invitations to any student that might want to join in? There's two ways. The first is you do receive an invitation. The NSLS does coordinate with um, individual universities and based on a set of criteria, uh, GPA and leadership potential, uh, a list is generated and the invitations go out. However, if for some reason you did not receive an invitation, you can apply um, and that you go to nsls.org and there will be an application portion there and you can go ahead and, and fill that out. I do believe when you apply, you need a letter of recommendation. So that's always a good thing to throw out there because that sometimes takes a bit of wrangling to uh, obtain because people are on their own schedules. So, um, but yeah, uh, it's, and it's very easy once you join. You pay a one-time membership fee and, and that is for your uh, Foundations of Leadership certification program. Um, and then also for your induction kit. So you get a t-shirt and all sorts of other goodies and a, a lovely certificate that goes along with it. But um, you just pay the once. We never charge dues anytime after that. Membership is for life. There's no need to renew anything. It's super user friendly. Well, that's great. And where can, where can people find the application? Is there a website? Yep, that is nsls.org. Well, great. 
Well, Corey, yeah. Laura, thank you for joining me. And hopefully we can get some new members in the NSLS. I think both of you did a great job selling the organization. And thanks for watching another episode of The Pulse of Spokane. What? You haven't been to the library lately? Stop in today and see that the library is more than books. Spokane County Library District facilities feature on-site technology, including Wi-Fi, computers, and printers, as well as free use of meeting rooms. The Library District offers events and programs for all ages, from story times to career development and employer classes to social security workshops. Our staff is well-trained and happy to help. Find out more about your library at scld.org. Welcome to Tom Sawyer Country Coffee. Tom Sawyer Country Coffee only roasts the finest organic coffee for our signature blends. Enjoy a cup at our coffee shop and local businesses and organizations across the region. I'm Tom Sawyer and we choose the Pacific Northwest. Hi, this is Kurt Stockwell with Well-Dressed Walrus. We are a local website design and development company here in Spokane. What we do is build beautiful, usable websites for local businesses. The website needs to be beautiful. It needs to be usable for your users, your customers, and yourself. Contact us anytime. We'd love to talk with you about your online marketing. Thanks for watching this episode of The Pulse. We are where you are. Check us out on any of these other platforms as well as our website. This show is sponsored by Local 29 Firefighters Union, Homes for You, and Apex Cannabis.